No, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, that that makes that makes it easier for me then. <laughs> yeah, I get to stare I stare at you now. Do you tell me how you want to run this? Whether you have a set amount of questions because you know what you're trying to do, and I'm just volunteering if it works for you. Yes, I have I have a um, set amount of questions. I just want to know um, where you are right now, where you want to be, and let's come up with an outcome, if that makes any sense. Okay, all right. Well, um, I was going to walk away from the books. Okay. Because I've been doing self-publishing and teaching people how to write a book for five years. And then I don't know whether you saw it, but Frank thinks that I should still do it because it's been my most successful money maker for the last five years so he said why are you walking away from it right yeah um, yeah okay so uh, so i have two options i have an existing program uh that hasn't sold well to date um on facebook ads okay what are you selling there um it's how to write a book in 30 days okay and I have another program. Uh, I've set these two. Actually, no, I've got a couple that I set up for Facebook ads just before Christmas. Then we moved house and I really did it for about two days. And then I just turned it off because I, I didn't have time to watch it. Okay. So uh, they are things that I was selling for $47 just to see if I could convert like a tripwire from a Facebook ad because people say pretty much from Facebook ads, it's cold traffic. It has to start off under $97. That's what I've been told in the past. Right. Right. I've got, I've got a really different mindset towards that though. Let's, let's go. Okay. All right. So I've got two of those to test once for people who are already authors, um, but didn't get a bestseller. So they'd either want to relaunch their book as a bestseller or write another book and make it a bestseller. So that's one of them. And the other one is um, for people who want, who have already written a book and wants to make more money from their book. So the, they need more income streams from their existing book. Okay. And they both have programs attached to them. On the thank you page, I do a one-click upsell. Okay, right. And they're already set up. And then I came up with an idea last night, but it's not set up. And I don't know whether you want to be only doing something that's an existing funnel or whether you want to give suggestions to funnel sequence that's working already for you. Right, right. Okay, what's the uh, idea there? Okay, well, this idea I came up with last night and 95% um, of the people who do my book courses are women. Okay. And most of the people who do my book course want to tell a story. They want something's happened in their life and they have a story to tell. Right. Uh, so what I was thinking of doing is is running a 30 day transformation instead of a 30 day challenge and getting people to write a chapter instead of a complete book. Because most people don't tend to finish it because it's such an emotional journey when you tell your own story. Right. And so I was going to sell it like, well, let's do a chapter and then I'm going to give them the opportunity to put that chapter in a book and I'm going to make it a bestseller. So they don't have to do any of the doing. They just have to share their story. And the 30 days is going to be about me helping them write 3,000 words of their what happened in their life. And to me, on a Facebook ad, that would be so easy to target people because you only have to target people who are in things like, you know, um, maybe they've lost someone or they, they're a widow or they're someone um, who's in a breast cancer survival group like the McGrath. So they're going through breast cancer, so they have a story that they want to tell. That sort of stuff. Or um, pretty much you just... 
I just ask people, have you got a story to tell? And everybody seems to have a story that they want to tell. And that's how I've been getting people into my last one. So my last 30 day challenge that I did without any ads, I made 20,000. Right. So that's through people that already know you, right? Yes. All right. See, that's, that's where my, um, that's where my mindset goes into, uh, you would finish your lunch money if you go in for cold traffic on Facebook. All right. The reason being ads specifically work for people that have had at least a bit of a touch point with your work. Okay. So the way I would like to work is, have you got any blogs or any, um, sort of, so you would have blogs or you would have any videos that you have your live videos that you'd want to re, uh, launch again okay no matter what part it was just to gather a pixel or just to gather an audience or do you already have a pixel or an audience that's set up that we can start targeting ads to I put a pixel on mm -hmm. um, probably about three four months ago so I definitely have been sending traffic to have you, my website. Have you harvested yeah. that pixel though? Yes, that pixel's been working because um, when I went and did a Facebook course in November, right. um, they checked that my pixel was working. What, what website is that on? That's on pambrosman.com. So I've got an email list probably of about 2,000 mm -hmm. that I also uploaded to make a customised audience All related right. to books. Okay. So your pixel has a page view that's firing and one for purchase. I've got no idea. All right, I'll just... I don't that. understand how the pixel works. That, this stuff is all completely over my head. All, all I do is someone said I had to put a pixel on my website, so I did, and that's as far as it went. Okay, so now the pixel is basically something that you really got to understand. Uh, yeah. So can you see your page there on my page? Yeah. All right, it tells me that uh, and whenever I come to your page, I'm being picked up on page view and on purchase. Okay. All right, so you want to also add to your Arsenal view content. So if somebody does happen to view any of your content or clicks or any of these, um, it, 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 it fires. And then you then harvest that, uh, the, you know, the, the, the information from that person, okay? So if somebody comes to your blog right now, you, I don't think you're pixeling them. It's only, the pixel is only, oh no, it's coming up there, right? But this pixel is not going to be, it's not going to be really helpful in as much as it just shows you page view and purchase, okay? So if somebody doesn't purchase, it's not firing. Page view is okay, but we don't know what page they have seen and what action they have done, okay? So that also is something that we can then, put uh, together so that we specifically know what actions are being taken on your website and who is that person so that when we direct those ads to them, it's, um, it's a no brainer for them because they've already been in contact with your information. Does that make sense? There? Yep. 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 All right. Good. So um, that's the first part that we just really need to speak to. Um, to really set up your pizza well, so that it's actually getting you as much data as we would possibly use, because without it, then we'll be just performing to an empty theater, okay? Um, I'm happy that yeah. you have uh, all these programs going, and um, have you got previous customers or a previous database that has worked uh, for you before? that we can utilize as a test audience or as a lookalike audience because people might have a problem, but the reason maybe they're not responding to your ads is they don't have a need to write a book about it. 
but the people that have been through your pro program already, um, you know, they would have listed something that Facebook might pick up on the reason that they uh, decided to purchase your product. And then they show us people that are aligned to that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've got, um, I've got people who've been through my book courses. Right. Um, but they would have been uploaded because I uploaded all my emails to do with books when I did my class custom audience. Okay, okay. Um, do you know how to create a custom audience? I went through it on the one day, but if I had to do it again, I'm not sure if I'd remember. Right. But I, I did create it myself on the day in the course, but I haven't done anything since. Okay. Well, essentially, we would definitely, because for social ads to actually work, um, and the reason why a lot of people are getting it all wrong is they're really trying to uh, go to people that don't, they don't actually know. Now, there's a lot of factors that go there. The ad visual that we're gonna be putting on there, it has to be something that breaks the pattern of that person's thinking because we are in their news feed, okay? And we also have to have really good copy. So if somebody hasn't heard of you, Pam, or hasn't known of you, if the, if the, if the visual doesn't relate to whatever it is that's going on in their life at that particular moment, that's a wasted ad. If the copy yeah. is not breaking their pattern or getting them to think or giving them a call to action there and there, that's a wasted ad. Okay, so that's also really something that we need to see. Or if the person has seen that copy before and it's something that did not relate to them, that's already another wasted ad as well. So we need to really keep changing and, and chopping and changing uh, regarding to that. Okay, so first of all, we really need to work on your audience. Okay, the reason being if we keep throwing ads out there to an untested audience or an audience that really does not like what we're selling, it's like we're performing to an empty theater. All right, so that's the first part that we would really want to delve into try and create as many audiences around what you worked for before and people that have had a touch point with your business at least for the second time they see the ad, they will remember that they have seen you or known of you or whichever way. Now, the best way to actually get more people coming through and hitting that um, um, pixel. Pixel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is by really, really, really making sure that people are seeing your blog. How often are you writing? I don't blog. I hate blogging. I get all my sales purely organically on Facebook. Okay. And then I just copy and paste it onto my blog. So at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm live streaming. Mm -hmm. Then I'm getting the embed of the live stream. Right. And then I'm embedding that on my blog. Right. And then I'm sending people from my list mm -hmm. to the Facebook video, uh -huh. which then continues to get me more likes on Facebook. All right, right. Can we play with that a lot? Okay, what's your website done off of? Uh, just give me a second. It's a WordPress, but see, this, this, this website, I'm barely, the reason why I'm barely using it is that the guy who built it has disappeared and it's 95% of it is just falling apart. Okay. So and I can't edit and do anything. Half the things I want to do, I can't even fix. So that's why I built a new website and I haven't been using it. Right. The reason why I'm saying this, Pam, is we really want to get into people's faces, but by providing them with content, because that's the only way. These people have a story. You can imagine um, somebody coming up to you and say, right come out come out here and tell me your story like you say it's emotional all right these people really gotta know like and trust and you have to create an environment that they come to you all right but in a way that it's set up that they have seen your ads they've seen your blog going out and you know some sort of level of trust okay amongst us we know each other we respect each other with um you know high flying colors because i know when you say let's jump on i jumped on and i left everything else i was doing because it's pat 
all right? But not everyone is going to do that. You know why? Because they don't know us yet. So with the lives that you're doing, I can see that I'm gaining a lot of views. 433 is a lot. Um, is this yours? 11,800? Is this you? No, 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 that's Murray. That's, that's Murray Smith. So I, um, I embedded that because it was in relation to the doing the live stream challenge. Right, and 700, 700 views is a lot of eyeballs. That's over a thousand eyes that went through your, your thing. But people have to see your stuff nine more times, all right? So what maybe we can start by doing, Pam, is I can suggest that we refresh some of these blogs onto your Facebook page and then get them to be automatically boosted. Would you have maybe like a $5 budget that you can pay in Facebook to get your items boosted and really gather an audience. And then from there in the process, while we're gathering an audience of people that have been exposed to your work and see what it is that you're doing, we're then putting your real sales in front of them. So that's a no brainer for them. Would it be better? These videos that I've been doing were targeted at doing the 30 day live stream challenge. Do you think that I, and I've put that off till March because I didn't have enough interest in it? Okay, so what we can then do is, we, besides the automatically boosting of them, do you have access to the back end of your website? Yes. Okay, great. If you do, let me just have a quick look. Sorry, I'm just a little bit rough on my things here. Uh, WP admin. I'm just going to log into my website and see what the plugin is that I use that repurposes uh, my blog posts onto your Facebook. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that whatever you wrote, even if you wrote it five years ago, it will be brought back again. Okay. Yeah. Now, without you being involved. So what then that does is we are now really trying to get as many people to your website so that they're pixels and then it's then easier to come through that pixel to get, um, you know, to just direct ads to people that have had some sort of uh, influence or some sort of touch point with your um, uh, stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, so does when they click on it in Facebook, does it get redirected to my website? It will be redirected. Okay, how, how have you got them set up? You, you just want them to... I don't... Uh, I probably get very little traction on my blog posts because I don't... I'm not really a blogger. I, I repurpose content on there. Mm -hmm. But I would, to be honest with you, because I wasn't going to do books, I was going to build a brand new list, which is why I haven't been, you know, I haven't really been ignoring my list. Okay. So maybe, because they were all built on books. Right. Your, the people that have worked with you before would definitely yep. buy off of you. Okay. That's the reason yep. why. Yeah. People that have bought off you or they would know somebody or we could use um, their character so that Facebook can copy them and give us people that look alike them. Yeah. All right. So these people that have at least sent you some money would be more than happy to take a look at it. And then what that does is it makes your adverts relevant to those people. Okay? Yeah. Have you ever heard of an ad score? Yeah, I've heard about the relevancy score. Right. I'll show you what my, um, my, uh, ad score is on one of the ads that I had while I was in the outback. It's, it's one of those things that once it's, it's relevant, people would be sharing it, will be sharing your information and then it makes it very, very easy. Can you see that one there? Yeah. All right. So I've got a 10 on one of the ads that I've got going and it's reached about 31,000 people. Uh, and it's, you know, they're only seeing it once, but it's giving me all these impressions, these clicks, you know, and it's. And how are you using that to your advantage? How am I using this to my advantage as in this? Like how are you monetizing that reach? Okay. So this reach now is people that are, getting to know and 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 then find out i mean getting exposed to live long digital okay because these are all just the posts that are being repurposed on my my um page live long page the engagement 
okay? So now when these people come through, they get pixel when they come to my blog. And then I will then send them relevant ads, um, which comprise of either the coaching aspect or them to do the blueprint with me. Yeah, Australia-wide blueprint or just a, a canvas lead generation. So I've got three other ads that are going, but this one is the main one that I'm actually, um, you know, reaching out for people to get a touch point and a feel of what Live Long Digital is all about. And how long does it take you to convert? How long does it take me to convert? Um, well, I'm playing the long game with this one, Pam. Uh, you will see, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm interested because I can understand you're doing coaching and Steve's doing coaching and Frank's training is all about coaching. Right. What I'm interested in is, is knowing as a passive income, can you make money with cold traffic? Not um, the long term game that Frank does. Frank, I know, there's so many different touch points and then put them into another funnel. Yeah. Um, I know exactly what the model is because I've been with him for like seven years. Right. So my thing is, <clears throat> I'm not interested in doing that specifically for passive income. I want to know, is there a way to have a product that converts with cold traffic? Right. Uh, call Directly. Yeah, cold traffic, you would, you would have to have a big ad spend. Because, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Right. But we can cut the whole process of ad spend by giving them content that we already produced, which makes it less work for us. Okay. And they then binge through whatever it is and then they will be buying whatever um, you have, like I see, you've got $149 author profits, interactive books or whatever, all these products they can still buy, right? Yeah. Right. So this is exactly what we're doing. So all these blogs, no one is seeing them. What we want to do is revive them in a way that, yeah. yes. So that then would be going through to either cold traffic or people that have seen them or they will be sharing it. And also Facebook will be learning from them, which makes it easier, makes our job easier for us to reach these people. So what we really want is Facebook to learn the people we want to advertise to. And the only way we can do that is by giving these people relevant content that makes, you know, that, that they interact with. And when they do interact with that content, Facebook then knows that this is the right kind of person. Whenever you do have ads, they'll give it to them. So technically that is still cold traffic, but it's cold traffic that you have, you know, done a bit of homework to before. You know? Okay. Now the thing is, is that the blog, the regurgitate my blog posts won't be a good idea because they're all over the place. Okay. I only blog when I'm promoting something. So there's no content on there. But there'll be it, no it, content of value for them, except they'll be, promoting either my revamp you course they're, they're all just promo pitches maybe there's maybe. no content okay you, you don't want to try that oh i'm happy to try but i'm just saying i'd have to make new content because what's on there because i've not been blogging i've not been using my blog for content i'm just using it for selling so you just be putting pictures after pictures after pictures out there. That's all you'd be regurgitating because that's all I blog. Right. And a lot of it's very different. Like I might teach someone how to do something that's completely irrelevant to books. Okay. But you've put it out there, haven't you? You've got archives from July 2014 there. So that's... Yes. Some of them are okay. I, I got a whole lot of content from another website that I put called self-published you actually I pulled it down okay um i've got content we can use it's just not on pambrosman.com oh okay um where is it coming from well it was the, somebody set up i paid someone six grand a second set up a facebook funnel for cold traffic uh -huh. it was on an optimized press website and it was on there does do you, does it belong to you yeah, yeah, it's all mine. All right, so why put a pixel on that page? I wouldn't even know how to use it. It's uh, here. It was all set up by him. Oh, okay. Um, so, so I, um, I don't even know if I can get into the back end of it anymore. All right, find I, out. I should be able to, but I don't know if I can. Okay, find out if you can 
then then maybe I could, I'll be able to help you. I can walk you through the whole process while on 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 um, speaker like this. Yeah. I've got it redirected. I've got the domain name redirected to pambrosman.com because I couldn't use the website and all the content was irrelevant. But um, I wrote it, so I should be able to find the content and then just republish it. I'll, I will do that if you can. All right. So I want you to download this plugin here. It's called Revive Old Post. Okay, revive old posts. Uh, are you? Hold on, let me. Let me. I can it. put the plugin in. I know how to do that. All right. On my website, so that's fine. So revive old posts. Yes. Right. Okay. So can this I is... choose which ones that I can revive? So if I went and sifted through them. All right. Can you, can you see my screen right now? Yeah. Okay. Great. So. Basically, let me see where it is, the general settings. Yes, you can choose which ones you want. Yeah. Okay, so a number of posts you want to share, maybe one or two, and how old it should be. Okay, and um, let's see. Yeah, so what it does is it's just regurgitating all my posts. I've got 89 blogs, so all of them are just being put in at every every maybe a couple of days or so, all right? And when people do come to my website, they then get pixel. I then harness that information and then send direct ads to them. That makes ads cheaper because these people already know who we are. It's not a surprise for them. So that's the okay. whole point. The whole point is to um, use whatever we've had already, okay, to, to get either new traffic and also um, essentially just pixel those people and so that Facebook directly just goes to those um, pixel people uh, because, and then it's easier for them to convert because they've had a touch point with us. So that's pretty much how. Um, Are you doing more written um, content or video content? Okay, so. On your blog. Right, now Facebook has given us a whole wad of tools to play with. The carousel, um, you know that carousel? Yeah, yeah. Right. And you can also get people to actually just message you straight. You can make that into an ad. Okay. You can get people to call you direct as, an, as, a, as a call to action on an ad, which is specifically from your page. I don't know if you've seen those ones. And I also do video ones, but video has to come with closed caption. The yeah. reason being 20, 25% or 17%, I'm not quite sure between those numbers of people watch video with that sound kind of weird yeah. because they're in the office or they're in the toilet or they're in a the train yeah right so if it doesn't catch their attention with the video right there and then that's why a lot of ads are just going into um you know uh quicksand have we got the um has it rolled out for everybody to get the automatic close caption uh, yeah i think have so have you got it I think I think that's um, that's out there. Or oh, YouTube does it as well, All right? So when you upload your video to YouTube, you set it on to private, and then when you go to edit the captions, you then download the SRT file and then upload yeah. it to Facebook. Um, I think you say SRT dot English or something something of that nature, and then pretty much it. Um, um, you can then use th that uh, as, as, a, as a, a closed caption uh, file. Which one do you recommend? I just do text and image for my blog content or video? <laughs> All right. So essentially, I think with what you, you have, you, you really need to, to try out what your audience is. Because if you say your audience is widows, are they at work or are they sitting with their grandkids? You know what I mean? While they're watching your video. So you really, it, it really goes down to what your client is doing by the time they're hit by your, by your ad. Okay. For me, I know most of the people that I'll be targeting, they get their ads during the lunch break. So I make sure that I have a video with closed caption 
or just a video that leads them to a landing page. Okay, well, see, I've got two different audiences, so it just depends which product I'm going to promote. See, the, the other two are for business, and right. this one I was going to do is more the self-help group. Okay, so if, you, if your people are business, you may just restrict your ad to between 6 and 7 in the morning. You know why? That's when they're showering, that's when they're getting up, and so you're yeah. not stabbing them during the day because maybe nobody really looks at phone at, at, at ads. Since we've been speaking right now, maybe the last 30 minutes, there's been about a million ads that are going through our newsfeed, but have we seen them? No. No. All right. So you can restrict okay. the timing uh, of, of when your ad goes out. I'd really recommend that you try out this, um, this uh, tool here that I'm, I'm using that I asked you about. Um, ad Espresso. Yeah. Okay. So essentially what it does, I'll just give you a rundown. And this is how I have managed to pretty much do whatever it is that I've been doing lately. Um, it, 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 it gives you exactly how your ads are going. It shows you the video metrics. So like right now, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah. I did this video here. Um, it's had 4,692 engagements, all right? And it's been impressed to 8,549 people. Okay, now I can then target people that have watched this video at certain uh, intervals, people that have watched 100% of the video, people that have watched 95% of the video, people that have watched 75% or people that have watched 50%. So you would know that somebody who's watched 100%, they're totally engaged, they would sell yeah. real fast. Okay, and somebody who's watched 95%, they might need a bit of convincing because maybe they didn't see the end. All right, somebody who's watched 75%, well, you know, you know what they're like. And somebody who's watched 25%, they're cold as, you really want to make sure that um, you, um, you, you maybe retarget them again, okay? And then here is, is the best period of when the ad was really going well, okay? So Tuesday is not a good day for me. Wednesday is good, Saturday is good, and Sunday is good, all right? And like I was saying, between six and eight is a really good time. And also at 10 o'clock in the evening. So all throughout here, it tells you that my clients are not really engaged. All right. Because, you know, they're busy. They're at yeah. work. Okay. So at eight o'clock, one video had uh, 3,000 impressions. All right. And at 10 o'clock, we had 2,000 impressions. And because then that's when people are free. But here is business time. So I don't really push my ads during that time. How much are you spending a month? For this, this is a $49 uh, product. Oh, no, not for that. For how much do you spend on ad spend just to build no like and trust a month? No like and trust is usually, usually the most expensive. Um, I'll just, I'll just get a rundown of right now. I know I've, I've spent about a thousand or so dollars in the time that I've been away in the last 30 days. Um, yeah, the reason being, I, I really wanted that. I don't feel like I'm not doing anything while I'm away. Does that make sense? I lost you in that, in that last, last minute. Yeah. So I'll, you're going to keep. Sorry. Are you going to keep spending that amount every month? Um, no, no, because now I'm back here. I don't, I'm not going to be spending that much. Um, the reason being it's, it's not worth me spending uh, a lot of money when I can be talking to the people. This was because I was away. Right. Yeah. Um, that's when I was creating a lot of no luck and trust. But now I've also got, you know, contingencies that are sharing my blogs while I'm away. Uh, that are sharing things into groups and, you know, all automatically. So it's, it's spreading the word for me. I don't really need to spend that much on, on, on ads. But this is an average of $15 a day. And when are you going to start tracking your conversions from that money that you spent? Okay, so this whole week, what I'm going to be pretty much doing, because this, what I'm just showing you is my stuff. I also have yeah. stuff, uh, obviously privacy reasons, whatnot. But um, if we if need to be, we can show you. Um, 
here it is. From the last 30 days, I've spent 1,261. Yep. All right. And it does show me across all, um, across all ads that I've been running, I've had 19,229 conversions. Now, these conversions are either they've viewed content, content and gone through to the website. All right. But these ones are the ones that I really count. 5,637 are people that have actually clicked to go to uh, my website. Yeah. All right. And then pretty much I will then check with ClickFunnels how many people actually then converted and became customers during that time. But I know I have created plus or minus 800 emails while I was away. Okay. So you're using it as a list builder. I'm more interested personally. Mm hmm and finding out how to convert from Cold doing fun. this. Yeah, pretty much. Is it possible to make money? Say I was selling a physical product like a book. Right, a book, yeah. Yeah, you know, not, not the 10 touches information, whatever. I want somebody to prove to me. Yes that you can still convert directly from Facebook ads. Not with doing all these touch points, yada, 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 <laughs> that sort of stuff. I uh, mean, I'm not knocking it because everybody's do doing it, but not everybody has a coaching business where they pick up the phone and they do all that sort of stuff. They're just physically selling a product. Right. Can you still do it or not? No one will give me an honest answer. Yeah, because that one then is, is subject to results. Um, if somebody says, yes, I'll do it, then they probably are, are going to be lying. First of all, we really need to drill down on your landing pages if they're going to convert. And if it is something that people really want, has there been a feasibility study towards you know, what the market wants and is it exactly what other people – uh, sort of selling within your niche and are they getting what sort of results? So, yeah, that, that that's a lot. Of, yeah, which is what um, ClickFunnel Russell Brunson teaches. He just goes to a information product on ClickBank, right? And then he goes to where the ads are, and he reverse engineers the ad, and then he just builds the exact same. Funnel. Ad funnel and then puts it on the exact same place where because if that guy's ads working on that website. Right. Then and it's still there a week later, then that guy's making money, you see, because you don't stick an ad for a week or even a month later if it's not making money. If it's money. not working. Yeah, exactly. If yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Uh oh, I think I know what you're saying. Like creating exact banner ads with exact you know, and then going to that person's, uh, that website that is giving him cold traffic. See, that sort of stuff works in the States. I'm not sure about Australia in as much as um, acceptance to the digital economy uh, that people do have. And that's why I, because there's a lot of tall poppy syndrome here. I, I don't know if you understand that term. Um, people really want to know who you are first before they, they engage. But if you're using the American market, the American market is, is, is really used to online conversions. But if you're targeting the Australians and especially widows that are already skeptical about life, then... Oh, I wasn't going to target widows. That was just an example of someone who would have a story. A story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's, I'm targeting some people because they're the ones most emotionally attached about wanting to write a book. Right, right, right. No, they're the people that I don't have to twist their arm to buy the product because they have a story that they want to tell. Whereas when you get the business people, all they think about is how hard it is to write 3,000 words and you have to beg them to write it. To write it. There's right. two different markets. You're just like, they, the emotional people want to share their story. 
but having said that, the emotional people don't always have the money, which is why it's got to be a low-end product. So which is why I was going to just do it for one ninety seven, and go for volume instead of high-level products. Okay. <clears throat> one other thing. Have you got a Facebook group that... No, can... I use... I got... I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, yes. Your one. Not my own, no. I used to have a group and I stopped it because they wanted me to mentor them for free, pretty much. No, nah, right. So what, so I, can. what I would suggest is um, also have a contingency group that you can then curate those kind of people and just sell to them as well because you already put them in a, in a confined environment where you're already setting yourself up as an authority. Um, it... it, it I may not be the, the, the right kind of person for instant online sales, especially the way you're talking, Pam. The reason being, I know the Australian market and I know the Australian people that we are now looking at. First of all, it's people that you want them to bring out a story. Maybe they don't want to bring that story out. So they want to be in an environment where they feel that they are not just you know, saying out there whatever they've been holding because, like you say, it's it's an emotion. You know, uh, yeah. so they want to relieve it, so they want to be in a safe environment where they know that they're being valid, not just putting in their email address and expecting some lady from somewhere to you know listen to what they're saying. Oh, no, that's not a, no, see, the 30-day challenge, they get me and they have a Facebook group. So I already have 87 people who did the last one in a private Facebook group, which was part of the 30-day challenge. So no one gets access to that except the people who are in the challenge. Right. It worked right. really, really well and they want to be affiliates for this new challenge. Right, 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 right. Okay, now that makes a lot of sense because <laughs> it's the emotion part. Because also I'm thinking if we're going to be putting out Facebook ads there, somebody just doesn't want to give out their email address, you know, knowing that they are giving away. They then feel like they've already told you the story by doing that. So it really has to be some sort of really safe environment that we create first through the ad and then through the no like and trust. So. Um, so I was going to do some videos. Can I, if I do some videos about how powerful it is to tell your story, this is how I was going to lead into why I'm doing it. Right. Um, and because I've helped so many people by telling their story, it's, it's like story healing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When you get it out, then you can move forward. So I thought if I just start telling the reason why I'm doing it and they start getting likes and videos and shares because I'm going to put them in the groups and sort of talk about do you have a story that you think could help people um then can I retarget those with ads those people who viewed those videos specific to this challenge that I'm going to do right see that's 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 we're getting somewhere now because once somebody has had a touch point with your um stuff they would stop and look because also facebook looks at how long somebody stops to look at the video even if they don't click it or how long they, they stop to look at an ad even if they don't click it all right yeah. so that is also measured by facebook so the more people scroll past the more expensive the ad is going to be but the more people just stop to even read and even if they don't click through right because that's when they start measuring the click through but actually stopping they're scrolling and, and then seeing the ad because they have heard of you and you're a familiar person. So yes, if we then target ads to people that have watched this video, then it will make both our lives easier. Cause well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. If I do a live stream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just do specifically storytelling that is going to be aiming, but I'm not going to send them anywhere to begin with. Right. I'll send them when I do the ad. So the live stream is just going to be preparing content to get views because I know when you send a video out in an ad that's already had like 800 hits, mm -hmm. people are more likely to watch it just because they've seen that other people have already watched it. Social proof. Yes. So I'm thinking I'm getting good traction on my videos 
why don't I do strategic videos specifically for this program I'm going to run, get some views on them, and then use them for our ads? Right. Okay. So maybe you maybe want to start with when you do a live session, do you boost it? No, because everybody's saying don't boost. It's a waste of money. Well, yes, that's where maybe the, 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 it's a waste of money because they're not targeting it. All right. So what I want us to do is comb through whatever you have so far in your pizza. Okay. Um, and then create an audience with that and then boost that live video to that audience. Now, does that make a difference? Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I okay. can do that. All right. So do you want me to walk you through combing your audience? To comb your pixel? Yes, yeah, so, because I wouldn't have a clue. Can I, um, can I screen, can I video this? Or will you give me, this being recorded? Probably not, is it? Oh, do you want me to record this? Just the part that you're showing me how to do this so that I can go back and do it. Not a problem. Okay. All right. So I'm assuming you've already changed your page to a business page? Uh, one of my pages, I've got lots of pages. One of them is a business page I'm not actually thinking I turned it back because it, it it's annoying isn't it and there was a pain and I couldn't access anything. I couldn't share anything and <laughs> until I went and I turned it back yeah I, 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 I do understand a lot of people are doing that but I think you um, you you're wasting resources if you don't have a business uh, part of your Facebook, at least for, you know, creating these audiences and pixels. Okay. So, um, I can make it, turn it back. Right. Okay. I've got so many other pages. It's just my Pam Brosman official, but which one's the bit? Oh, Pam Brosman live is probably not relevant. So just do it on Pam Brosman official. I can do it on that one. Okay, great stuff. All right, so <clears throat> what I'm really excited about is you can see I'm doing this this much reach, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> I have less than 2,000 people. Maybe right now we've just crossed 2,000 people that actually really like my page. So organic reach is dead. This is yeah. all reach that is coming through from, and we've had 52 likes, I don't know, in the last seven days, which is, a bonus, but I don't really count that. Okay. So pixels. All right. So you, you go, when you're in your business manager, it gives you an option to go uh, to, it's going to be a bit slow. The reason being it's sharing the screen and I think we're recording at the same time. So bear with me then while I work, walk you through that. Okay. So when, when you've done your, your, your page into a business uh, manager, you want to go to pixels and then just see what it has done, say, during the time that you, you want it to work, okay? So this has been recording from January 13th, which is last week when, when I was away. So all these have been firing on the page, okay? But we want to come through, say, the last 14 days. Okay, so when you create an audience through um, the pixel, you click on create the audience and then it will then ask you, do you want anyone who has visited your page? Now you have on your page, the pixel that says page view and purchase. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So you want to go to people who have who, not specific pages, anyone who visits your website. Okay. And I think for you, it has been, it will give you at least 180 days. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then also include past website traffic. Okay. And then I would then write what the name of this audience would be. Let's just say first, first pixel. Okay. Uh, audience. All right, and then edit description. All 
All right, I'm gonna put mine 2017 because this is not my first. All right, so that it saves. So you then create that audience, all right? Well, while that is happening, Facebook will comp through everyone. It will take a while, okay? So yeah. maybe go on to the audiences. So this is where you create the ads. This is where you uh, check what the pixel is doing and if it's working. And then you then go to, oh, one second. I don't know if I'm being, uh, if this is making sense because it's being very slow, but I'll send you through the recording so that you can um, see it for yourself. Are you doing this for people when you're as part of your test or are you, what, what, are you actually looking to do for people because obviously you want to turn are you going to teach people how to do this is this going to be a product that you're going to do or are you just trying to get customers for your agency well essentially what i really want to do is get customers for my agency i will set it up for them for the whole month and then yep. eventually they'll see that it's a lot of work to do for them and then they'll just say why don't you just do it for me right okay yeah <laughs> yeah 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 there's, there's a lot of work. All right. So now what's happening now is that the audience will be, it's, it's coming it through. It might take a bit of a while. If you come back maybe after 10 or 15 minutes, it would have um, populated here already. Okay. What if it says audience is too small? No, because it hasn't populated already. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it would say it's too small. Anything below 20, uh, yeah. it would be too small. So, what a pixel is, is just a code on somebody's profile. But what yeah. now it's doing is it's turning that code into a real profile and matching that person with an existing Facebook profile. So how do I make the pixel go on a specific page? All right. Okay, so this part is finished. Um, let's go to your... Because, see, that's the thing. I... I the whole template stuff, so I couldn't figure out how to put it in the header so it goes on every page. Oh. But can't you add a can't you add a um, plugin to put it on whatever page you want? Yes, 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 yes. I have one, and it's called. Let me just have a look at it. So would you be sending them to some sort of opt-in to see if they're interested in participating in the 30-day challenge so that you're getting their emails or just just get them to, because what am I sending them to? You're if, sending them to a landing page that collects their email address for them to opt-in, get whatever hook you've given them like or a lead magnet, and then they are... Uh, opting into the 30 day uh, challenge. Do you also have an email sequence that follows through after that? I haven't set this up. I came up with this idea at two o'clock in the morning last night. So uh -huh. this doesn't even exist. That's okay. what I did with my last 30 day challenge. It was an idea that I got in the middle of the night. Next day, I built it in two days and made 20 grand. So um, sometimes I just run with these ideas, but I never did it to cold traffic. All right. So, what are you using? What are you going to use as a lead magnet? I would think maybe a template that gets them to write out their ideas and bring them out. I could do that. All right. So, I think. Or that's maybe um, have you got a story to tell? Because some people don't know whether their story. So, if they actually, because the guy in Frank Kern's thing said, do a quiz because they're going off. So if you ask them to answer these five questions to see if your story's worth publishing, and obviously every story's worth publishing, but they don't know that. So you really have to get over their mindset of thinking maybe their story's not good enough. So the quiz, is it something that's mobile responsive or are you just putting out a, um, a template from Monkey? What's Survey that? Monkey, I don't know. I haven't decided, just did that spontaneously in this moment. I don't even know what I'm going to have as my lead magnet. I was just going to send them to um, an opt-in if they wanted to participate in the challenge. So it's like pre-registration, and if they're interested to find out more, they just opt in. 
Okay, right. I think I think the lead magnet has to be stronger than that. As in, either you're giving them a template for them to fill out to see if they actually do have a story, or yep. if you want to tap into their emotion of either if it's something that has been bugging them for a while to let it out and they can then help somebody else. Yeah. And, yeah, you know what I mean? So So that they... They leave a legacy or I don't know what emotions you would use towards that. So I would go in with um, a, a template for them to find out if they actually do have a story and yeah. then something that leads them to having a consultation with you or something that gives them a brief of what a good story would look like, like an ebook, you know, like, like, a, like something that says, you know, how, do you know if you've got a story and then you maybe tell your story and then get them to accept the challenge and see if they want to say your story. I mean, they want to tell their story. So lead magnet has to be something really, really convincing. The, the thing is we as professionals, I think we have to actually step into our customer's shoes and find out where they are in life and why they would want to interact with our staff. Because we know we've got a product and it's good, but does the lay person who doesn't think in terms of how we think of, I'm going to just wake up at 2.30 and write money, you know? Like right now, you, you're looking at a way of how you can print money for the next month or so from an idea you had at 2.30. Not a lot of people have that, okay? It's something that they probably had from their childhood and they're still holding on to them and it's stressing them. All they want is an outlet that you may provide, okay? So maybe it could be um, that template or a blueprint of how they can do it. I'm not telling you how to do your job, sorry, but I'm just saying it really- No, 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 that's good ideas. You're just throwing ideas out there, that's all good. Yeah, it has to be something that really, why would I wanna tell? Because I do have a lot of stories I wanna tell, but I'm saying, why would I stop and go out of my way to say I want this out? Is it gonna help somebody? Is it gonna change somebody's life? Um, you know, is there somebody that told their story and now doing better that maybe I would envy them to you want to be where they're at? So I think the lead magnet has to be really strong if it's called traffic. Um, and yeah. I think, yeah, because it has to really get them thinking, oh, snap, I didn't know I needed this, but I think it's something that needs to be done. Not another well, person throwing ads out there. It, uh, the one that is the most emotional is it. It's always is it time to tell your story because most people they want to tell it, but then they just don't. So you're actually giving them permission to say it's you know perhaps it's time to to tell your story. That's what makes these people want to do it because they know already know they've got a story to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the people who haven't written it before, it's usually other people either telling them not to write it. So it's, it's really got to be something that says, it empowers them to say, but see, I'm giving them a choice in this challenge. They don't have to publish it. Okay. So that, that, that's where they have the choice. They can just write the story and then that's, that's good enough for them. They were able to get it out. And then leave it for their kids. They can do whatever they want with it. But they've told the story. Or they can publish it. And right. the choice is up to them. And then that takes away the fear of what if somebody... Because it's what if people... It's the what if that stops them from writing it. What if somebody reads it and knows it's me? What if blah, 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 blah. So I thought if I take the publishing out of it and just get them to share the story, then it's their personal choice. You've, I've taken the pain away of what happens if. You know what I mean? If somebody was beaten up in a relationship and they don't want to mention the person's name. I think what you need to do now is probably as a future thing is actually get people to submit blogs to you and then use those people as, um, as leads. Okay. Because those people already, 
so you, what you want to do is you just put out on, you know, sauce bottle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever used it to actually get not your publicity, but to get people to, to work with? No. Okay. So what I would suggest is go out to sauce bottle and then just say, ladies that have been through whatever, whatever, here's your chance to put your story out there. Give us a blog, whatnot, whatnot. Um, and then we can talk, maybe you want to get it published or you just want, you say it. Okay. So people will respond. Okay. And then when they have responded, you then make your discretion to say, should I publish this? First of all, it creates new content for you. Second of all, you are now going to be attracting a lot of people that are in their circle. And because those people are going to share that blog as well. And I think after that, you then don't have to create content. You now just naturally have all these people writing all this stuff. And you can then just go on top of that and be like, you know what? Everybody's writing their story. Why not you? Does that, does that, does that? That would also set off pixels on my website too, wouldn't it? If I send them. Oh yeah, they'll be firing. You know why? Because if Jane writes her blog on your blog today, first of all, she's published, okay? On somebody else who really cares, who is Pam Brosman. And second of all, it's now going to be something that she's going to share. All right. It's not as scary as a published book. You know what I mean? It's just a blog. All right. So you yeah. can repurpose that as user generated content. Okay. In as much as when other people, when she shares it to her other people, all those other people are just people that you would not have had a chance to reach out to. And they're just being pixeled because they have read that blog on your blog. They've read that transcript on your blog. And you now have people that are interested, have read that story and might read a couple more. And they might also be interested in <clears throat> letting out their story. And before you know it, you've created a platform where people actually come for stories and you are just harvesting from there to get people that want to go further. And it's no longer you chasing out with ads. It's people that are actually coming in with their stories because you've created that platform for them. That's maybe a better idea, actually, to do Source Bottle instead of Facebook ads. Uh, yeah, because right now I'm actually really thinking, I've got a story, Pam. My dad, my mom died and in the beginning of 2000. Okay, and my dad married by the end of 2000. So naturally in Africa, if I was going to buy new shoes uh, to my mom's funeral, the second time I'd wear them was going to be to my dad's wedding. So I just ran away from all that because I thought my dad had deserted her. And from then on, we just sprouted into what is now. Okay, so I believe there's a whole lot of story there. But I don't feel like right now is the time for me to say it or it, it's, it's too broad for me to, um, you know, go out there and say, I've got a story to tell. But if somebody says a particular, you know, specific uh, topic and then just say, you know, um, you know, you probably have a story of when marriage failed, 500 people respond to you. You already have that. It's, it's not too broad. And then you put again on source bottle and say, okay, I'm looking for stories of people that, um, you know, had an overseas relationship that didn't work out, <laughs> you know, and then you just segment it as you go. And then from then on, you just start picking and choosing from the people that are coming to you. So essentially you become that platform that becomes the publisher. Now you are providing yet another service, Pam. You, 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 you send them out to, to, to Amazon, you become their own publisher because I'm more than happy to just be written on Pam Brosman's blog and that's my day mate. Some people are happy with that. So if you provide that, you know, it's, it's, now, it's now more of a, you holistically really saying, I'm not just taking your stuff and pondering it off to somebody else. No, I'm bringing you in. Let's share your story. It's not about me making money. We just want you to let go, release. And then from then on, you're going to have a lot of ladies signing up, waiting. I'd say you have to lock Steve in the house because everybody. Hmm. <laughs> I think, okay. I think... You've given me a lot of food for thought. So I actually agree with you. I actually think getting it off Facebook cold ads is going to be very difficult. Um, I believe 
the people who have a story in the women's groups will come to me anyways because they have a story. Right. My girls, my girls and um, who are already in my group who started writing their stories, they will bring people who they are. Women know their mates' stories and they'll say, you've got to share this and they'll bring people to me. And then get people to write on your blog. Now you've got user-generated content. You don't have to worry about anybody trying to sell you SEO because you know what? Fresh content is what Google is looking for every day. So you've already beat two birds with one stone. That's new keywords. That's people that are just automatically sharing your stuff. I wish I could do that. I wish I could get marketers to, to write on my blog. But you know what? Marketers are you know, too good for themselves. They don't want to really share what's going on unless it's a really pricey um, publication. But for what you're trying to do, for what you're trying to do, I believe that if you actually sit down and, and, and really organize your blog in such a way that you allow, are you friends with um, Linda? Linda Endover. Ed Endover, yeah. Yeah. Right, find out how she's got a front end system of people just automatically posting blogs onto her blog. And I'm, then I'm one of those people. Exactly, right, so that. You, you know what she does, she just sends you a link, right? And then you write your blog and then you send it and then she edits it or whatever. You can have maybe your, uh, I think Steve has got an administrative girl that yeah, does yeah, yeah, yeah. it, puts it properly. And then whenever somebody posts their stuff, they might send, they might post a couple of times, three times or four times, whatever. Then when they're really keen, then you would know that that person is um, a customer and then you just, you know, they're not cold anymore. They've, you know, every person has 250 people that they know. Um, when they share that to their people, you know, you've got access to at least 250 people that would then get to want to be a part of what you're doing. So you've beat, you've done it organically. It's a long game. Which I'm not interested in. So, um, <laughs> No, no, you've got to know me, Prosper. I, I want things quick and I want them fast. All right. I've, I've been doing this for 10 years, so everything I do, it's just quick and fast. Um, you ask my husband. He just knows that I'm, I'm just yesterday. So it's not, the blogging is just not my thing. So trying to talk me into doing blogging or getting other people to do blogging and maintaining a blog is just not going to happen for me. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm a person who, when I think of something, it's visual. I'll go and post it. I'll say it. And then I repurpose. Repurpose works for me. The okay. only reason why I'm doing Facebook ads is because Frank said I had to. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, I've made six figures organically. Right. For the last 10 years. Um, I've not done the seven figures organically. He said I pretty much to go seven figures. I have to do cold traffic. You have, well, that, that is cold traffic. Because it's people that have been sh exposed to your content. Um, and I, I mean, Pam, I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but in our own world, we probably don't see what other people are doing, okay? But I also use my wife as an experiment. When she goes through her news feed in, in Facebook, there's a lot of stuff that she goes through. When I go through my Facebook, I see Pam, I see Frank, I see Steve, I see things that I want to see. All right. So the other everyday person that we're trying to get to, okay, is being bombarded by ads, by people every single day. The news is not even giving them a break as well. But if you come in holistically with this whole platform that I'm thinking would be the hub where people can have a safe haven, you're not the one writing the blogs. Okay. It's the people that are submitting the blogs. You have somebody looking at them and then publishing them. All right. So, and then you can then do your quickly speedy ads to the people that have seen it. At least they've been pigs all that. Because right then they've told their story, but that's not the whole point. The whole point is, is that I'm guiding them through teaching their story. And then the wow factor is, is they get to be part of a book. You, you, you are generating leads by bringing, by them coming to you. They are warmer than you would ever think. Because once somebody has written something on your blog and then you say, you know what? This is actually really, really good. Uh, Jesse, this is what I have. Write a chapter of this, which is not a blog. Just write a chapter out of this. Here's a 30-day challenge. They'll do it. You know why? Because that's your lead in. 
All right, because if you're just gonna go into, I, I don't know, maybe it's, it's different with women, um, but I would know there's a lot of skeptical people out there, and especially with stories, if they, it's a, it's a warmer environment, if they come in on their own accord, it's not gonna take as long as you think it does. Put a couple of um, posts out on Source Bottle, guarantee you get at least 10 responses. On those 10, one will do your challenge, and that will be faster than you trying to put $50 into uh, Facebook. Maybe I want to put my, my guarantee on that. Yeah, but what happens if you get a whole lot of people who write on your blog, who swear, who are uneducated, they can't spell, and you're really just giving a place for people to vent? Because that's what happens in groups, and I don't want my blog to become that vent because people are who are still angry in their story. Right, so why don't we create... Why don't we create um, a second website? Because that's not what I want my thing to be. I want it to be inspirational, motivational. So it's actually the only people who get to come in the book who have lessons learned. So it's wisdom. Okay. You have to make it. The only reason why you write a book is because you make someone's life better. No one wants to read a story that's a rant and then make them feel worse at the end of the story. So the whole idea of sharing your story is when you go back in time, there's a lesson that you learn. What's the lesson in the story? And at the end of each chapter, they say the lesson in the story. And yeah. that's why people will read the book because they will be able to read it and say, you know what, that's where I'm at. Oh, okay. But so it has to be life-changing. Yeah, but if it's reg regulated, you know, if you have... Um, if, if, if before somebody posts on your blog, you have to approve the post. So it's not just going to jump on, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe I haven't really thought this through, but I, I would, I, this is how I would go about it. Like really yeah. just other people's time uh, to get my own leads because there's, there's a lot of people that want to be seen out there. You could take advantage of that, but they, See, a lot of people want to buy stuff, but they don't want to be sold to, okay? We celebrate buying Ferraris. We celebrate, um, you know, buying luxurious houses like yourself or, you know, buying luxurious boats or whatever. Those are purchases, but nobody wants to be sold to into uh, any of that stuff, okay? So if you sell me into, I will make you a best seller, um, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I'm not the person for that. But if you say, well, here's a platform. Why don't you write a story? Maybe it will help somebody. It's a different approach. If you, yeah, if you which, is, which is a different market. So this one's for the self-help people, and which is why it's a 30-day transformation. You've got to use the language that's going on in their head. They're, they're stuck. They're stuck in their story. And it's like story healing. So until you tell the, I don't know if you know Lewis Howes. Lewis Howes has an amazing story. And I know. He, he was sleeping on his sister's couch. And no, that's not his story. He was abused. He was uh -huh. abused as a, for, see, no one knew that story until six months ago. And the reason why he's doing what he's doing now is because someone convinced him it was okay to tell his story. And he told it on somebody's podcast his mother didn't even know oh okay and that's what i'm talking about people live their lives with these stories that stop them and the minute he told his story his whole business went through the roof understandable but it's because somebody offered them a platform to say that story which is what you're doing right yes yes but then that platform is not being requited in as much as you're taking them and then just sending them off to Amazon. No, no, no. That's not what I'm doing. That's what I mean. I'm actually in the 30 days. I don't care about the book. <laughs> the book is for those people who want to help people. You only write a book when you know that your story will help another person. Right. So it's actually story healing. I, it's more important for me for them to tell the story and get it out because that's when the healing comes. If they decide that their story in a safe, secure environment could help save somebody's life or someone who's going through that right now and they say, you know what, I want to share my story, 
then they choose to go in the book. So that secure environment, is that one-on-one -on -one with you? No, that secure environment is women only in a group that's private. If they don't want to share their story, they won't come and do it. Why would you sign up to share your story in a private group if you weren't ready to share your story? You wouldn't sign up, would you? I, I, I think maybe, yeah, you, yeah. I'm just trying to think the logistics here. Because then, from then, are they going onto a landing page that then offers them the link to the Facebook group or do they have to look for the group you send them a link to the group or is that they, they have to buy if they want to participate in the transformation it's, right. it's paid so they pay 197 to participate mm -hmm. and then they automatically get put into the private group and what what are the benefits of being in the group that's where we write we all write our chapters together and i tell them how to write their story what do i do with the chapter they do whatever with it with it you do whatever you want with it. They have the opportunity to be in the book, but if they feel at the end that they don't want to, then they just keep it. Okay, so you are at the end of this coming up with a book of all those chapters? Yes, those people who want to be in, and I do all the work. See, that's where people don't want to do it. They don't want to learn how to do the book. All they want to do is share their story. So I show them the easiest way to get their story out in 30 days. And then, then if they want to participate in the book, then I take all their chapters and I turn it into a book. Okay, right. So, so I'm doing the work. They don't do any of it. They only write the story. All right. So the outcome here is you are printing out a book. No, it's not going to be a print book. It's going to be a Kindle book. Okay, you are publishing yep. a book with all the stories. Yes, and guess who goes and shares the book? You Everybody do. who's in the book. No, when you're in a book, do you want to tell the world? Yeah, yeah no, that's true. That's the same why, with the book as well. That's the why same do you think Chicken Soup for the Soul is a multi-billion dollar business? Because there's a lot of authors in it. But then what that's I say, right. yeah, that's the same with the, you've got the same mindset, but do it electronically as well. So there might be that person who doesn't want to go hardcover or Kindle or whatever, but they're still happy to write you four, five, six, seven, eight different stories. And then in the process, that person is going to share it far and wider than the book would go by use of Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. You know, a book won't reach all those places. Yes, but I can take snippets of people's stories and use that for the content on the blog. As content on the blog. Yes. Which will be marketing the book at the same time and inside the book, guess what's going to be at the very front of the book? But you want to, how are you Do you, want to, be, do you but, want to be in the next story? Of course they do. That book is going to be my marketing platform for the next course, for the next 30-day challenge. Because someone's going to read and say, I've got a story to tell. I want to do the next 30-day challenge. So it's right. virally going to be marketing my book. Right. Now, I, I get it. I get it. It's just I'm, I'm more inclined to to use a generated content and this, 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 this would be really, really a gold mine to just get people to come through to you and without you having to worry about all the jazz. So well, I know how much work it is taking Linda to get people to participate in hers. A no. lot of work because no, no. she's actually having to get people to find time to write the content. I'll, t I'll tell you why she's doing that. Because she doesn't have a niche. All right? Her, her group is all over the place. So it's hard to harness anything really out of that. But if she niches like you have, 
it's easy. It's easy to tell a woman that you are 35 today, or you're 45, or you're 65. You must have a story to tell. Come tell us your story. That's the leading. They write that blog, and then when they're reading that, hey, listen, we've got a 30-day challenge. Here's 195. Um, it's 195. You then become coming to a book. They'll be like, you know what? I'm halfway there. I've done it already. Let's go there. So in the process of when the book is being written, content is being put out there as well. You're creating a whole community around your book before it's even published. You know what I mean? And by the time it's published, it already has people, you know, um, you know, thirsty for it. And, 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 and it goes on and on. I'm sorry I was born in the internet age, so I would rather stick everything onto um, the internet more than I would a lot um you know, the outside publishing, because it might take how many 30 days, however long until the book is published, but it takes two days maximum to get a blog out. So in the meantime that you're trying to get people in, you already have some people that are already lining up, telling their story. You know, they're probably not ready today. They'll be ready for the next challenge. So uh, if, if anything, if you want me to help you, do this blog part, I definitely would um, in as much as you are going to need it. If the time the book comes out and then you're like, guys, look at the book, let's share it. It, it, it hasn't got that much momentum as in you're going to have to re-engage people again. But if people are already constantly reading out your short stories, sharing them around with their people, they already know what to sort of expect. So that's, that's just how I feel. That's how, just how I would do my thing in, in as much as you want quick money, but you're not really solidifying a base for, for where to sprout out from, you know, you, you going in for the kill, um, which has made you money in the past, but I feel like there's also a lot of money that you're leaving on the table by not, you know, rekindling those that are not ready today. Because the people that you're going for are the people that are happy today. But what if I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm ready in 30 days, I've put my mind together, maybe I'm going through another transformation, maybe I'm doing another program, I can't concentrate on your program today, but I'm happy to just read a blog, you know, and then just get motivated to, to write next time. So I'd, I'd seriously consider that because people are not at where you are when they see you at or when they see your program, okay? And that's where the frustration is. I might be out traveling in the outback, and then I'll say, okay, I'll look at this in 27 days, and by the time I get back, there's already 500 other things I gotta look at. So, but if there's a blog that I can latch on, at least you pixeled me, and then by the time we then go in March, when you're ready again with the ads, like you said, you know, then we've got something somewhere to start off from. I would seriously consider having a um, user-generated blog uh, of content. If it wasn't people's, I know where you're coming from and I know you're coming from a digital marketing perspective and I know you're coming from a bloke's perspective. If it wasn't storytelling, I would agree with you. <laughs> but getting other people to talk about things that happened in their life and right. the legal ramifications for them mentioning someone's name who you know what I mean and having that on my website and the liability that comes with someone saying that's not true and defamation and all that sort of stuff um to me that you know, needs to be guided it needs to be guided I never tell people to use people's real names and stories but when you're just getting people to go and put their story on your thing and to micromanage that would be a nightmare. Okay. That's the only reason, as I said, if it wasn't telling people's stories, mm -hmm. and a lot of these stories are pretty horrific, like, I mean, well, one of my authors, prostitute on the street by the age of 12. Whoa, yeah. Doing drugs. I mean, yeah. we're talking serious stuff here, and they will just tell it as it is. Yeah. And that takes my, that takes my website into a whole new... Over you, 18. No, nah, not even. You yeah. become you become a, a, a police source of information because... That, they, that's right. I don't want to go there. Yeah, because then the cops would then, you know, start reviving old cases <laughs> and using... Yeah, those. yeah, so this is where you've just, you know, when you tell a story, um, you've got to, you really got to, 
you got to be careful. So, anyways, um, I may not run with that idea, but it's been very helpful as to what is involved with having to uh, convert cold traffic. All right. Well, I hope I hope um, it, it wasn't because I'm like like I always fight with Steve. I know the technical side of things. I wouldn't know the practicality. Like you, <laughs> you know, like you just say, you know, or results that actually come out and what actually happens. Like I didn't think of you know people just coming in and writing whatever content. I'm just thinking, okay, this is what could could work. Blog and let's let's go there. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that's okay. No, it's really given me some food for thought and made me have to think about some things. But um, I really love the sauce bottle idea. Uh huh. It, it could be sauce bottle. It could be all those other groups that you're involved in as well. You know, just invite the people to share their story, and it's easier that way. You already have the email address. You already have them pixeled, and then you can just fire ads at them. So that's, yeah. that's where I was going with it, that it's just harvesting, you know, people that have or are already sort of involved with your work somehow and yep. not going to cost you that much. Yep, yep. No, that's all good. Okay, well, I'll let you go. Thank you so much for your time. Right. Well, thank you. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully. I probably won't be one of your experiments because now I don't think I'm the right person for it because I think you're looking for that long-term person who's going to want to do lots of and has a big facebook ad budget and i'm not having a big facebook ad budget until someone can prove to me that it converts right right yeah no i'm going in for the really long term and really creating a base for where we're going to grow towards and yeah just was going to start off small and then scale it up as we go because it's not a it's not a you know i don't want people to be one click wonders i want people to be you know, solid and, and then, you know, have a... Yeah, yeah. No, it's just a different market and, and that's one. It may be even better for Steve with his coaching programs I, um, I than what I'm make, doing. Yeah, I could actually just want to work with Steve and, you know, reverse engineer some of the stuff that he's doing. Um, but we are also on the verge of creating a product. So that, that could also help. And then we can just then incorporate whatever is in um and you know without having to change any 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 anything there well i would be very interested to see when you create that product that yes. has none of you in it so directly whether you could sell because that's all steve's looking for steve wants to know if he can sell his blueprint from cold traffic without having any access to him oh yeah that is possible it, it, well it, then what's the difference you mean without having any access to him, uh, without him talking? Just an information product, that's it. Pure information product. Like at the moment, most of the guys are sending people to opt in to a uh, webinar and then at the end of the webinar, like Frank does, he just sells his video course. Right. No, no, no. You can, you can do up to maybe $200 without you even being involved. You just have to make sure that that person has seen so much of you that it's now a no-brainer. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, I think that's where people get it wrong. People don't realize that there's so many components. Uh, once you become omnipresent, then people then really do get to know, like, and trust you. And they know that you're not just a one-click wonder that's just going to take their money. But the fact that we are in our community and we feel like we're always present amongst ourselves. The outside world there is a totally different person. And I'm, and I think you don't have somebody to really look at. I'm lucky. I've got my wife. I can see how she consumes uh, information. And that's yeah. when I really notice that even when I'm talking to her, she's watching a video, a cooking recipe video. And you know, she, she, she can get away with it because it's got uh, subtitles. So, you know, that also made me, so if she's doing that, that means there's, there's a whole community out there that's thriving on that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't think maybe you guys have someone to really deal with the outside world, people that watch TV and are exposed to everyday fluff. Yeah. They need to be spoken to in a totally different way. Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and have an absolutely awesome day. I will. I will. You're my second call of 2017. So 
yeah, it's, it's, it's off to a good start. <laughs> well, that's good. I know it's that you're going to get even better. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Pam. And thank you so much for this. It validates what I do, even if maybe we didn't come up with a plausible conclusion, but I'm, I'm happy we've had this chat. Oh, absolutely. No, you opened up my eyes and then actually showed me how I can make my, um, my custom audiences. So I'm going to have a play with that. Cool. I'll just chop the part of the video because I think I just left you recording. That has... Okay. Uh, or I'll actually do it without it delaying and then I'll send it through to you. That would be really helpful. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye.